Haven is headed southward through the Pacific at a speed of 33 knots. The Missouri is falling behind at a rate of about two nautical miles every hour. Can't this thing go any faster? I'm afraid not. This is as fast as she'll go. Liquid's target is JD, a U.S. military satellite disguised as orbital debris. Haven will have to surface in order to use the railgun. If we can figure out JD's orbit. <clears throat> there. We should be able to predict where Haven's gonna surface. <clears throat> JD is in a synchronous elliptical orbit, so its next perigee should be in. Uh... Oh. Got it! 15 hours, 6 minutes, and 12 seconds. Right. In 15 hours, it's going to be over the Bering Sea, 494 nautical miles from the Bering Strait. Haven knows it, too. They'll be holding position in that area. Do they really have to get that close to launch? The nukes fired by Rex's railgun have a damage radius of approximately 300 meters. The target is a moving satellite that's traveling at 10 kilometers per second. To get the precision they need, they have to get as close as they possibly can. Liquid won't launch his nuke until JD is at perigee. The Missouri can use that time to catch up. Will we make it? Once Haven stops moving, it'll take us an hour to close the gap. After that, the Missouri needs to strike before Haven's launch preparations are complete. This ship was stripped of most of its equipment and she's got no electronic warfare capabilities of any kind. No radar, no high-tech weaponry. We'll have to rely on our own eyes to track the enemy. From the looks of it, Haven is going to use a railgun mounted on the bridge to destroy JD. You'll need to open the cover to launch the nuke. That's our one and only chance to get inside. Inside? Why can't we attack it from here? It wouldn't do any good. As long as Liquid has control of the system, physically destroying GW would still leave supreme authority in his hands. Sons of the Patriots. Yes. Dr. Emmerich is right. That's why we need to destroy GW from the inside, before attacking Haven itself. Hmm. Liquid's very own Death Star. All right, everybody, here's the plan. We know Haven will have to surface in order to fire the railgun. When it does, the Missouri will see it. We'll make a quick approach and deliver a strike team. Our goal is twofold. Prevent that nuke from launching and wipe out GW's programming. The enemy relies entirely on electronic means of threat detection so they won't be able to see the Missouri until they surface. Akiba! <laughs> we'll launch the strike team from catapults at the exact moment Haven's armored cover opens. They'll then penetrate GW's physical server room and infect it with a worm cluster. But what if they shut down GW before we get in there? Liquid is already entrenched within the Patriots network. He needs to stay there, or destroying JD won't serve him any purpose. They can't afford to have GW shut down. And let's not forget, Liquid will throw everything he's got at stopping the strike team. Exactly. The corridor leading to GW is defended by directed energy weapons that emit certain types of microwaves. Did you say microwaves? That's right. And at that frequency, the waves will start to evaporate any living person within range. A giant microwave oven. You'd have to have a death wish to go in there. Sounds like the perfect job for me. Snake, this isn't the time for your stupid jokes. Outside the corridor, liquid soldiers will be out in full force. Inside, there'll be unmanned weapons waiting for us. Where are you getting all this information? You really think there's a way to destroy GW? <coughs> yes, 
I do. She left us something that'll point us in the right direction. Naomi helped with the preparations to stop Haven's launch. Naomi? All of our internal data on Haven came from her. The reason she got on the Nomad with us in the first place was to get close to me. But she ended up turning to Sunny instead. What do you mean? She left her plan in Sunny's hands. This entire operation is based on the data she left us. <coughs> Whose side was she on anyway? Never know exactly what her true intentions were. But one thing's for sure she was determined to stop Liquid. Promise. Promise me you'll carry on our will. Come on, guys. Somebody say something positive. Anything. Attention! Listen up! A wise man once wrote, The tongues of dying men enforce attention like deep harmony. Where words are spent, they are seldom spent in vain. <sighs> Any other questions? <clears throat> yes, Snake? Everybody got a smoke. <laughs> so this program, you're saying Sonny wrote it? Actually, only about a third of it is her work. Hmm. Naomi was working on a program to destroy GW, but she couldn't quite finish it, so she handed it over to Sonny. <laughs> Sonny went fishing in my library to see if there was any source code she could use to complete it. Eventually, she found some. It was Emma's worm cluster. sister's code and worked it into Naomi's program. I didn't have time to look over every single line of code, but what I did see reminded me of Emma. It was like she left traces of herself behind in the structure. But this worm cluster that Sunny created, it's even better than Emma's. <laughs> Sunny's worm destroys the AI's intellect by triggering apoptosis in the cells. Once uploaded into GW, it should do some real damage. <coughs> Snake, you ever think about quitting? Why? It's not like I've got my health to worry about. <coughs> Set on going to Haven yourself. 
Why don't we get somebody else to go? There's no need for you to do it. I still have things left to do. <laughs> Besides smoke. I've still got things to do myself. And I don't even smoke. This is my first real engagement. I see. Your point? At first, getting assigned to this ship was a big letdown for me. But the inaction was kind of a relief, too. Captain... I... I'm scared. It's okay. I'm scared, too. This is also my first time. But I'm not going to let it get to me. Because I'm more scared of what'll happen if I run away. Nobody is going to die on my watch. This ship is going back to Hawaii in one piece. That, I promise. Right. Thank you. in no shape to fight. Best to let him rest. Right. Without the system to protect them, everybody's losing their nerve. They say SOP's after effects are so bad that a lot of soldiers are deserting. The only people I have left to rely on are Marilyn. Him. Kind of an unknown quantity, isn't he? I hooked him up with a 9-ID M82. Fancy meeting you here. What are you doing here? I laundered these guys' IDs, then issued them new naked weapons. Including that catapult you're gonna be riding. Business has been slow ever since Liquid got his hands on the system. His extra orders stopped coming in. Mm. Now that all the weapons all over the world are locked, the only ones still looking to fight would be you and yours. They tell me it's not economical to replace all that useless equipment on the battlefield with my stuff. 
so I made an extra special trip out here just for you. Driven, do you even have the slightest idea what's going on here? Of course I do. See, when it comes down to it, the world's like this soda here. Once the bubbles are gone, I ain't got no use for it. It's worth nothing. I'm on the side of whoever needs me the most. You dig? If you need anything, just say the word. I'm setting up shop here for a spell. Enjoy it. Could be your last. Looks like that last smoke will have to wait after all. Later. Hey. Here. Huh? Oh. Oh, thanks. Snake, can you hear me? Liquid's warship, Outer Haven, is a modified version of an Arsenal gear model stolen from the Patriots. Inside, it's crawling with Irving and other unmanned weapons. According to Naomi's data, Haven is crewed by a battalion of enhanced soldiers, each called from the best the PMCs have to offer. If Liquid succeeds in destroying JD and gaining control of the Patriot system, he'll make Haven his flagship, and his PMCs will spread like wildfire across the globe. And then, mankind's armed subjugation will begin. Captain, Haven sighted. Prepare to fire, main gun! <laughs>
is exposed. There it is. A naked nuke. Let's finish it, Snake. Let this be our last battle. If we're responsible for liquid sins, then the onus is ours to bear. Right. that railgun, then annihilate GW. Good job, Snake. You made it on board. Welcome to Haven. 
enemy units are already on their way. Break through their defenses and find GW server room. Probably still around. Yeah. Defended by direct energy weapons that emit certain types of microwaves. Did you say that you say microwaves? If that springs out, the waves will start to evaporate faster than the person. Sounds like a perfect job for me.
Ranger! Take out the enemy before they get to her!
They cry for battle! Let me hear you scream! Howl! Roar! From the very depths of your soul!
her fingers. Snake, go grab that puppet.
Get out of my body. Forgive me. the last beast that doll you just picked up lets you manipulate anybody who's got nano machines in them sounds like something the devil's cooked up if you ask me mantis came from south america she was born and raised in a country racked by never-ending civil wars her village was attacked by enemy forces and burned to the ground 
This was when she was still a little girl. Hunted by enemy death squads, she was separated from her family. She barely managed to escape with her life. Ended up in the basement of this one building. It was full of corpses that had been dumped there. Almost all of them had been tortured to death. She was petrified with fear. And then, she heard the sound of heavy boots on the floor above her, followed by shrieking screams, the kind that would make every hair on your body stand straight up. She had stumbled across a makeshift torture chamber. Somebody would locked the door, and she was trapped. It was dark, it was dank, and it was full of a wretched stench. She couldn't sleep with the screams of torture victims all around her. All she could do was sit curled up in one corner of the room, trembling. A week passed, then ten days. She managed to keep hydrated by drinking the filthy water pooled up on the floor, but there was no food. Being trapped in that kind of place, half crazy from hunger, did a serious number on her mind. Did you know female mantises eat their mates? The screams went on day and night. She covered her ears, but it didn't help. And then, she was saved. By a little black mantis that taught her how to block out the screams, how to plug up her inner ears. What the hell are you talking about? I'm saying, Snake, that when she couldn't stand the hunger any longer, she started feeding on the corpses. But only the male ones. She didn't realize who was doing it. In her mind, it was a female mantis devouring her mates. It was like one big twisted waking dream. There was no mantis, of course. It was all a hallucination. Nothing more than some story spun by another person she created inside. Her unstable mind was what made her so vulnerable. Later, they ripped out what was left of her psyche with drugs and hypnosis and implanted the persona of Psycho Mantis. It wasn't her will that controlled the B&Bs. It was Psycho Mantis, half assimilated into her soul, pulling the strings. Screaming Mantis was just another puppet. Anyway, she survived several weeks down in that hellhole and finally got back to the surface. But the screams in her head didn't subside. They would always be with her. Only this time, they weren't real. The inner earplugs didn't work anymore. The Black Mantis had disappeared. There was no place left to escape. Which is why she was always screaming. To drown out the ones in her own head. But it's over now. You freed Mantis from that dark nightmare. Mm. The last of the beasts. You got it, pal. Well, I'm done playing storyteller for a while. Now get going. GW is waiting. And this time, you get to make up the ending.